Welcome to the 18th annual Game Audio Network Guild Awards pre-show. Please welcome Gang Awards co-host and membership liaison, Cody Matthew Johnson. Hey everyone, I am Cody Matthew Johnson, the Game Audio Network Guild membership liaison and your host for the Game Audio Network Guild Awards pre-show. First of all, apologize for the technical snafu we had, figured it out, all is good to go. I will also be co-hosting the awards with my idol and the indubitably talented Wilbur Roger II. I'd like to welcome you all watching from home and around the world. Each year, the Game Audio Network Guild Awards honors the top talent in our industry and we look forward to celebrating the best work from this past year with you. The show takes place each year during the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco, which was unfortunately postponed this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We're thrilled to have the opportunity to recognize this year's top talent and to also share this event with fans, enthusiasts, and our members like you from around the world. The Game Audio Network Guild Awards will begin in approximately 20 minutes, although I know we're a little late. But before it does, I'd like to share a bit about the organization for those of you who may be joining us for the first time. The Game Audio Network Guild, or GANG, is a nonprofit organization founded in 2002 by game industry veterans and is the leading organization for those involved in game audio, including music, sound design, dialogue, and mix in video games and virtual reality experiences. Our mission is to support members with a focus on our four main pillars, networking, education, advocacy, and recognition. And we do this through a variety of activities, including micro talks, diversity events, networking events, and the game, annual Game Audio Network Guild Awards. And most importantly, GANG is a community where people can learn, share, and grow. Here are a few words about GANG from members of our community. I can think of so many reasons why being in gang has helped me personally. No point in my career has existed outside of a relationship with gang. This is where it's happening. I got so much from gang to help my own career, and now I've been able to go back and help so many other people with their career. Being a part of gang has been critical for my success. Gang for me is really about being part of something that's bigger than all of us collectively together. It inspires me. It educates me. Gang, to me, is family. It's like a family of people that can help you um, get to where you need to go. Supporting our four pillars of network, education, advocacy, and recognition. We have an awards program every year. It's the most prestigious awards program in game audio. There are, you know, discounts on a variety of different pieces of software and tools. We have what we call the Gang Perks page. And this is a collection of discounts or specials for our members that we've negotiated with some of our industry partners. We meet so many people on all ends of the business. Every single game that I've ever worked on came out of a relationship that I developed through Gang. It's a terrific community of like-minded people. It's a community where I have felt at home, I have felt embraced. Our leadership in the industry, our ability to influence the rest of the games industry, I think is really harnessed by Gang. Gang has done more than any other organization or, or trend or anything that I can think of is raise the profile of audio in the games industry. Getting to know people, having people understand who you are, what you do. Really what we do is offer a support system. If there's any question that I have that I don't have the answer to, I know that I can turn to my colleagues in gang and ask them the question. Everybody finds a different reason why gang is, is, is important to them. Too many reasons here. Um, I think one word is community. The learning component is huge. To learn, to grow, to network, to be engaged with other people and other peers. It opens up so many avenues and opportunities for people to rise in the business. The only way for us to be a community is for people to be part of a community. 
it should feel like you're kind of coming home to your family of some sort. Uh, and I think Gang manages to do that. Part of it is to simply be part of something bigger. I'm just very lucky to be here, and I deeply appreciate everything that Gang has done for me. If you're a member of the Game Audio Network Guild on behalf of the officers and our board of directors, I'd like to thank you for continuing to be a part of this community and allowing us to serve you. If you're interested in joining and learning more about our organization, you can head to audiogang.org backslash memberships or reach out to me directly at membership at audiogang.com. And now I'd like to welcome a special guest voice actor Mike Shapiro, who is the voice of G-Man in Valve's Half-Life Alex. Mike is a voice actor, a theater director, he's an actor, and he's best known for his roles as the voice of G-Man and Barney Calhoun in Valve's Half-Life franchise. Most recently, he's reprised his role as G-Man in Half-Life Alex, which dropped March 23rd. In Valve's Dota 2, Mike's characters include the Oracle, and he performs in dozens of other games and cartoons, including Grand Theft Auto, Spy Fox, Torrens Passage, and many, many more. Mike has also created the beloved character Mick Z in Microsoft's 3D Movie Maker, and as a little known fact, he, in the, he is the voice inside every single staple, Staples Easy Button. How's it going, Cody? Hey, Mike. It's great to have you here. How's You've it been going, the voice Cody? of G-Man and Barney Calhoun in Valve's Half-Life franchise for 22 years now. I know that Half-Life Alex, Alex dropped, dropped in March. March. What's it yeah. been like returning to the game? Well, let me just say it's it's uh, great to be with you tonight, Cody, and uh, and <clears throat> here on the virtual red carpet <laughs> of the Gang Awards. Um, I mean, stepping back into Half Life and Half Life Alex in particular has been uh, what do you call it? stimulating? <laughs> and you know, I mean, I dig all the characters I've played for 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 Valve and in their various games, and but I get a particular kick out of G Man. And um, when they called and, and said, we're going to get the band back together last year, it was really a great experience. Um, I think we've had some, some of the questions were answered in Half-Life Alex. Maybe there's some new mysteries still laid out. And, um, you know, the visuals are, are, took a quantum leap, the experience of being in, in VR. First time I got a chance to try that, it blew my mind. Um, it was really exciting. And, you know, honestly... I don't know. I don't know. Did you say 22 years? <laughs> and whatever. It's been like 13 years, right, since we, uh, since we had a chance to, to, to get back together. And even after all those years, these characters have been, uh, you know, hibernating and percolating inside me. And um, Half-Life Alex is really the release valve we've all been looking for. Yeah, it's been, um, it's only been a little over a month. And I know you've been interviewed by quite a few outlets for your role as G-Man, including was it Vice, Player One, PC Gamers, and many others. How has the response been from fans who are like returning to G-Man and returning to Half-Life? Uh, in a word, highly invested. <laughs> um, I mean, we all are, right? Everybody's, yeah. everybody's pretty psyched about having Half-Life back active. And, uh, but even, you know, I, I, I talk with fans a lot on Twitter, and, and, and whether it's Half-Life or Dota 2 or, or, you know, even reaching back to whatever, games from the 90s, Spy Fox, Torrens Passage, um, you know, the fans are, are uh, involved and, and smart. They ask smart questions. They, ha they have keen imaginations. Um, so, I mean, even if I set aside the, uh, the marriage proposals <laughs> you know, that, I, that either I've received or been asked to conduct, um, you know, like, uh, I'll give you an example. Here's, um, I just launched an interactive podcast through an outfit called Playwrights Horizons. And there's a character that I play in it that's a lot like G-Man, and he's very much inside the, the uh, listener's head, and it's kind of an ASMR experience. Well, that's a multiplayer game. You actually get to choose which characters in the podcast you want to play. And I got a note from, uh, you know, uh, I think somebody reached me on Twitter and said, you know, I have this idea. I'd like to stage this actively in real time and, you know, sort of combine all the roles with players live. And I, I think that's probably an idea the producer of the game never even had in mind of the podcast. So that's, the, that's incredible that's the level. To go, yeah. go off script a little bit and kind of fast forward. That's something new and revolutionary. How does that, How does work, that work in an interactive, interactive podcast? podcast? 
So you have uh, you have the choice, and it's it's um, you can find all the information on my on my Twitter feed. You can find the links. It's Mike Shapiro Land on Twitter, and I'll I'll lay out for you like how to find it, and and you actually get to choose which players you're going to. Um, it's basically a hybrid. It's sort of half game, half theatrical podcast, and mm-hmm. it's a very sensory experience. It's deeply inside that just the audio tech that we used to record it was wild and you can um you can choose which characters you play and then the experience of of having one or another character and then you interact with other you know with a friend or with somebody else in real time it's a little hard to describe but it sounds, sounds very awesome, satis- it's saturated experience sounds, sounds very cool. cool so you've voiced many characters over your 20 plus years as a voice talent for people watching who are a sound designer or a musician and just don't live in the world of VO, maybe give some insight as to like what it's like to get into a character for voice rather than on screen or theater. Oh yeah. No, that's the good stuff, man. That's the, I mean, one of the best things that'll happen if you're lucky uh, is you'll get not just a script, but you'll get maybe the designers will give you some visuals of what the character might look like or even better um, sometimes the composer's on board early enough that they'll give you like a sketch or, or a sound designer. And I'll often say to the recording engineer, listen, I've got my lines, I'm off book. I'm going to close my eyes. I want you to just play the, the score for me, even if it's like a scratch version, a, a sketch of what we're going to hear. And, and just having that information, that added information, uh, the, the music or the sound design is going to actually inform how I inhabit the character, how I relate to the other actors in the room. It's, it's really uh, that kind of rich information that's pretty inspiring. And, and then, of course, you're, you're with your other actors, you're with your director and your writer, and, and you are off to the races. Very cool. Well, for all you audio directors out there, just keep in mind what Mike said, you know, bring the composer on early. Yeah, yeah. No, not a, not a plug for composers like myself. Well... I know that the game or the world of video games is super secretive, and if you say too much, the video game NDA secret Cody, service I think will you're come muted and, and I'm not hearing steal you. you. Oh, oh, one moment. No, yeah. There we there go. You Sorry go. about there that. This go. is that's it's We're showbiz. Back. It's showbiz. It's live. We're just gonna it's keep live. it going. It's live. This is live. We're gonna do it live. Um, I know that the world of video games is super secretive. Um, and that if you say the wrong thing, the video game NDA Secret Service is gonna steal you away. Is there they're anything gonna you can kill tell you us? with a cyanide laced crowbar? <laughs> is what they're gonna yeah, do. Exactly, blunt damage and poison DPS. Great. Uh, what do you got coming up? <laughs> What's new? Um, okay, so this podcast, um, which is called uh, uh, "A Play for Any Two Voices," so you can you can find that on Mike Shapiro Land on Twitter, and you'll link into that. And if you like. The, you know, the way G-Man sort of, um, the way G-Man gets all up Ooh. inside your ears. <laughs> if that's something you like, you're definitely going to enjoy this podcast because it's ASMR all the way. And Love. I've got a new animation project that's probably coming out in 2021. Later this year, I've got a game that I honestly don't think anybody even knows is in production. And everybody is going to recognize as soon as it comes out. And that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. All of this stuff, I'll give you guys a heads up. I always give my fans a heads up early on Twitter. And awesome. uh, it's going to be a good year. But, you know, right now we're all taking care of each other. And uh, it's going to be an exciting night. It's great. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for coming out. It's a blast. You're great. Absolutely. Thanks for, you know, hanging through the punches with the tech difficulties. I think we got it fixed. This is super fun. All right. Thanks again. Take care. Peace. All right, that was Mike Shapiro from Half-Life Alex as G-Man. And our next guest is the executive director of Game SoundCon and your president of the Game Audio Network Guild, Brian Schmidt. Okay, Brian, we're doing it live. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> We're doing good. We're doing good. You know, it's uh, it's been a long road getting here, hasn't it? It definitely has. Yeah, a couple <laughs> false starts. Uh, it's, it's a bummer it's... we can't be at GDC. I, I'm getting this. I really miss GDC vibe. Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, in the chat. yeah, you still get that live feeling, though. You know, things yeah. can go wrong. And uh, when they do, it's still fun. Cause we, we were too chicken to do live for a bit. But, but you were like, hey, we can do live. <laughs> and we did yeah. we're doing live. And we're doing it live, at least for now. You know, we're, yeah. we're winging it. We're doing it, uh, you know, quarantine style with no pro video crew. Anyways, yep. thanks for coming on the pre-show. Thanks for talking to the community. Um, just, you know, I'd love to talk to you more about how the award categories for the awards have changed. And maybe you can talk briefly about how they follow technology over the years. I know that when oh. the gang awards started, there wasn't mobile games didn't exist. So maybe there's, there's a hierarchy or trajectory here. Yeah, we kind of forget that uh, 18 years ago was, you know, seven years before apps were invented. Um, back then, about the only kind of games were AAA games. There was no indie scene to speak of. You were Genesis or N Sega or um, Nintendo, and that's kind of, that was kind of it. Um, yeah, the, the first award show, there was 34 awards, I think, in total. Uh, the show went on for about three and a half hours, um, which was really way too long. Um, it's a bit long. <laughs> I, was, I was going through some of the old winners. There's, there's some uh, fun nostalgia there. First of all, uh, the, original, the first award show was dominated by Medal of Honor, uh, the composer of whom went on to do, he had a decent career, uh, you know, Michael Giacchino. Small career, um, very small. Uh, but other <laughs> uh, sorts of... Um, you know, we had a bunch of categories that had kind of, kind of been gone for a while. We had a best commentary for a sports game. Uh, Madden won it that year. We had um, best sound design in a sports or driving game that was won by FIFA. Best arrangement of a non-original score. Uh, best edutainment or children's audio were categories. So we were really trying to be very inclusive. Uh, and it just got to be um, you know, a little bit, a bit too much. Very cool. Um, Best new audio technology was a that was X Act one that year. It beat out Pro Logic two. <laughs> and uh, best audio software, one of the nominees was Logic by this company called E Magic. Yes, there yeah, was who, a time where Logic wasn't owned by Apple. So it's 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 been kind of a crazy ride. Uh, the first iPhone game won in two thousand ten. Uh, in two thousand twelve, we added casual and social games. Uh, 2015, we actually decided to start calling out indie games specifically, um, and we started doing cover remixes in 2015 as well. Uh, the String Arcade won that year, so it's it's been really fun changing with the industry. Very cool, very cool. You know, we're a little behind, so I'm going to jump to a last question here. Um, during these trying times, it's it's different, it's weird. We're doing, we're we're making it work. Um, as the president of the Game Audio Network Guild, for you, why is it valuable and important to kind of uphold this pillar of recognition within our industry? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And as, you know, co-producer, I appreciate you getting back on track. That's good. Cool. <laughs> um, I'm here for you. It, it's, it's really in our industry, the game audio industry's DNA, to be the sharing open community where we recognize and appreciate each other, right? We go to these conferences, we hang out together, we geek out online or in person. Um, and it's just a part of who we are to appreciate and recognize each other as much as it is uh, to get together. Uh, it's kind of ironic, right? We're in a, an industry where a lot of times as composers or sound designers, we're doing very isolated individual work and focusing in our studios, but we're part of this community that is very important to, to all of us. And as I saw, I think it was Neil that put in the, um, in the chat, you know, especially at this time, yeah. uh, interactive arts are really more important than ever. And just, it's, it's a welcome reprise from the madness that we're going through right now. And it's, it's always so inspiring to me to look at all the nominees and all the entries and all the submissions mm -hmm. and just rem remember why we love doing this so much. And so that's- You're absolutely right too. The, the interactive reward. arts and games and any sort of entertainment media is so important to keeping us together and, and keeping us social. You're absolutely right. Yeah. All right, Brian. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for addressing our community. And uh, I guess I'll see you soon. I guess yeah, we'll see, see you, you soon. See you soon. Everybody enjoy the show. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Brian.
Coming up next is the main event, the 18th annual Game Audio Network Guild Awards, where my co-host Wilbur Roger II and I will recognize all the nominees and present awards to the winners in over 20 categories, including Audio of the Year, Music of the Year, Sound Design of the Year, Best Interactive Score, Best Original Soundtrack Album, Best Dialogue, Best VR, and many, many more. But not, not 34. I think 22. So more, but not too many. Following the show, we're hosting an after show where we'll be speaking with nominees and winners. And we sent every nominee an email about how to log in to the post show. So check your email and come join us. It'll be fun. We'll have a good time. It'll still be live. So, you know, anything can happen. I'll see you shortly at the 18th Annual Game Audio Network Guild Awards. Take care. Thank you for attending the Gang Awards pre-show. The 18th Annual Game Audio Network Guild Awards will begin momentarily. Join co-hosts Cody Matthew Johnson and Wilbert Roger II after the show for post-show coverage and special guests. Sit back, put your feet up, and enjoy the show. Please enjoy a special presentation from our diamond sponsor, Formosa Group. Yeah, having a good time? Yes. Yeah. 